Okay, last thing we're going to do is tabulate intersection. Let me show you a graphic to refresh your memory about this. So tabulate intersection is where ArcGIS will look in certain zones that you tell it. And it will, through several steps, it will calculate how much of the zone is comprised of a certain feature. So in this example, the feature is amount of blue versus green versus red, and those are representing something. Um, and so it's gonna calculate the percentage of all those different land classes within each zone. There are several steps involved. The first output is going to be this table, which shows uh, the zone multiple times, along with the different features and the different percentages. But that's not completely intuitive. So our final step is gonna be this pivot table where we convert the data into a form that's a little bit more intuitive. So now we're just looking within zone one, how much is, is blue or green or red, things like that. So let's go back to our example of our lights out. So we started with this raster of different land class types in all these different buffered locations. So the first step is going to be converting this raster into a polygon. So to do that, I'm gonna remove what I had done previously. So to convert it to a polygon, we're gonna use our conversion tool from raster and from a raster to a polygon. So we're inputting that NLCD buffered raster. For the output, we're gonna save it to our ENST456 folder. We're gonna call it light.umd NLCD polygon. and hit OK. So it's going to go through and convert. And you'll notice things look a little bit different. Now everything's one color instead of multiple colors. When we open our attribute table, we still see the different grid code numbers. Um, so remember, each number is representing a different land class type. Uh, number 21, 22, 23, 24 were the different impervious surfaces. Um, and now we have a lot more polygons than we had um, locations. Our next step is going to be having ArcGIS calculate within each one of these polygons how much is each land class type. So first we have to add a new column to our attribute table. So to do that, we're gonna hit this down arrow for table options. We are going to um, add a field we're going to call it area, set the type to double, and hit OK. So that added a new table in our attribute table. Now we want it to do something to populate with data. So we right click in our area column. We go to calculate geometry. We read our message, yes or OK. We make sure property is set to area. We ensure that the coordinate system is indeed correct, what we want it to be, so it's our UTMs. We wanna make sure we're in square meters as our units, and we hit okay. We read our message and say yes, and now ArcGIS has calculated how much of each link class type is in each polygon. So that's step one. Now we want to do the tabulate intersection. So we go to analysis tools, Statistics, tabulate intersection. So the zone feature, so just to refresh your memory, so zone feature is kind of like location, if you will, or how you're describing your location. Whereas class feature is what you want um, manipulated. So the for us, it's the land type and cover type. So in our case, Zone feature is going to be our buffered locations and the FID, so the unique ID number of each location, so each building where the birds collided, whereas class feature is the land cover type. So now we're going to go to that polygon that we, cr we created. For class field, 
We're going to change this to the grid code. So that was the land class type. For the output table, this time, instead of having the data saved to our thumb drive, like we usually do, we're going to let ArcGIS default. So leave it alone. Then we're going to scroll to the bottom. For output units, we're going to change this to square meters and hit OK. It's going to go through and calculate, and this table pops up in the table of contents. Now, it doesn't look like in the map anything changed because the map didn't change. It just ran some calculations and is going to display the calculations in this table. So let's open up our table. So now we see all those polygons. So we have lots of IDs. We still have our grid codes. Now we have the area and the percentage. So it's gone through and calculated the percentage as well. But again, this still isn't quite intuitive for us. We want to do that pivot table function. So for that, we're going to go to data management tools. We're going to go to table. We'll go to pivot table. And we're going to find that table that ArcGIS created and named for us. For the input field, we're going to use FID. So remember, um, FID was the locations. For the pivot field, we're going to use grid code. And for value, we can do area so that we can compare to our other moving statistics that we ran in previous assignments. So let's keep it as area. And now we're going to save it as L-O-U-M-D pivot. And we can save this to our thumb drive. So it's going to pivot the data. It's not running any analysis. It's just pivoting the table, the data. So let's take a look at this. So now for each location, so we're back to having 34 unique locations. Now we can see how much is, um, Lane class type number 21 and 22 and 23. So this is showing us square meters of the different lane class types. But I really like that feature of percentage. So let's make another pivot table showing percentages. So again, we're inputting uh, the table it made originally. So it defaulted to intersection three, I'm sorry, 13. I got an error message, so I'm just trying to remove that error message. Let me start over. Okay, pivot table, the one that ArcGIS created. I want FID as my input field. My pivot field, I still want as grid code. Now for the value field, percentage. And I'm going to call this one lights out UMD piv per. So pivot of the percentage and hit OK. When this pops up, let's take a look and open it. So now I can see land class types 21, 22, 23 are taking up 21% in some of these locations, 29, 32, things like that. So these are the percentages. So within, like at just site number one, we had 6% of link class type number 22, 38 of 23, 40 of 24. So the majority of site number 21 has impervious surface. So this helps to make it a little bit more intuitive. And remember, we can always save these tables um, as CSVs when we override the name. Instead of saving it as a .txt, we can save it as a .csv. And then we can work with it in R. So that was tabulate intersection. Um, I hope you enjoy learning this new skill and put it to good use. And until next time, have a great day.